right, here we are in the Sunlit Room. Uh, once again, our guest, the uh, amazing Kate Lynn Logan. Kate, thanks for being here today. And now, the musical stylings of Kate Lynn Logan. <laughs> Logan, live in the sunlit room. Uh, just amazing as always, Kate. Uh, such a beautiful, beautiful voice. Thank you. Uh, I, I love the fact that you've got such a, a rough edge, yet there's so much, uh, still managed to fit vulnerability into the sound. Thank you. That's, uh, that's really, really cool. Now, uh, Kate is here today. Uh, 
because she loves us here at KSER. It's true, I do. <laughs> but uh, she's really here because she has a huge, huge show on the horizon. Uh, Caitlin is going to be headlining at the Triple Door coming up on a Wednesday, April 22nd. That's right. Uh, with uh, Ellen Reed on board as her uh, support act. Uh, it should be a fantastic show. So it gets underway at uh, 8 p.m., right? 7.30. 7.30. See, it's a good thing I asked. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that'll be 7.30 next Wednesday. So uh, the question that I have to, to lead with is uh, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling much better. Um, I actually, this will be my first show of the year. I had a shoulder injury for quite a while that prevented me from playing playing out any so it's uh it's good to be back and it feels good to play again yeah now uh um it's since you were here the first time i followed you uh in your career through facebook and and everything else and uh and i was actually uh as, as a lot of your friends were a little worried about you sure. uh during that point uh because it, for a while there it looked like that injury was going to be something that might affect you even longer than uh, than it ultimately did uh what what actually what happened what was the uh, cause of that injury? um you know i had gone to a couple of doctors and um no one was really sure i wasn't sure if it was related to another um <clears throat> If I can be really honest and vulnerable, here are some other health, health issues that I have. Um, right. An immune disorder that um, can sometimes cause arthritis. And uh, so it could have been a combination of that, and it could have been um, my regular doctor thought it may be bursitis from oh. playing far too much <laughs> for far too long. Yeah, that, um, could, that could be a very painful injury as well. It, it was and it just comes and goes, painful. and it just will not go. You yes. think you got it beat, and then all of a sudden it's, it's back again. Right. <laughs> it's. Uh, yeah, it was pretty, it was, I mean, I <laughs> I haven't experienced anything like that before. It was uh, it was quite the, the kicker, um, but I'm so glad to be back, and I'm glad that it's subsided. Now, for the most part. Being, uh, being on the other side of that now, and, and being able to have the uh, uh, perspective now, you know, the 2020 hindsight, sure. knowing what you know now, uh, did anything positive come out of that experience for you? Uh, I realized I, I wanted to play more than ever. Um, because I had, you know, I, I uh, had struggled in the past with um, some emotional stuff and um, whether or not I really wanted to continue um, playing live shows at all um, because I'm much more of an introverted person and, and spending time in the studio and writing is much more where I feel uh, comfortable, most comfortable. But it's, you know, not, not being able to play at all <laughs> showed me that, um, you know, there's other... There are other things I'd like to develop, and one of those is, is live performance. So, so having said that, which is more excruciatingly difficult? <laughs> preparing for a live show at a venue like the Triple Door, or having to sit down here one-on-one -on -one with a guy like me and answer all these <laughs> doggone questions? Oh, man. Oh, no, no. One-on-one. One-on-one is great for me. It's uh, definitely the big crowds that throw me off. Well, see, then you shouldn't have been so doggone talented and drawn <laughs> such big crowds. <laughs> Now, uh, do you, uh, as you prepare for these types of things, and uh, and as you continue to write and record and move forward in your career, uh, do you worry uh, about a relapse or or uh, some other injury? Now that you've experienced this one time, is it something that kind of stays in the back of your mind? Sure. I mean, I'm definitely afraid of some something like that happening again. But um, you know, part of what brought on some of the physical illness was too much stress and worry and so if I focus on that then no doubt I will have a relapse um, so just trying to stay positive and like I recently built a home studio just you know a simple setup and um, that's brought a lot of joy <laughs> in the last couple of weeks I spent a lot of time in there. Um, uh, it's not only brought a lot of joy to you, it's brought a lot of joy to your friends and fans as well. Even if we haven't heard any of the music, just uh, the pictures of you and your little dog on Facebook are very <laughs> well, amusing sometimes. I love your dog. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I, yeah, I definitely err I definitely err on the side of um, overposting, and I just, it's a constant feed, you know, and uh, that's, even though I can tend to be more quiet in larger groups, like I have a very active mind, which is why music is appealing to me, and so... It's sort of, it's a strange thing for some people to see how, how much information I spit out on Facebook and then spend time with me and find me quiet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, it took me a lot of years to, uh, to figure it out, but what I finally explained to my friends, because I, I, believe it or not, actually experience a lot of those same issues, 
And, uh, and what I finally figured out to explain to my friends is that you guys don't understand. It's not that I don't like to talk. I don't like listening to you guys. <laughs> Stop whining. <laughs> my problems are what's important here, folks. <laughs> so uh, not to, to dwell on the injury aspect of things too much, because like you said, you, you want to move forward and, and not dwell on it. Uh, but do you find that it actually changed the way that uh, you attack songwriting or recording or the amount of time that you put into it? Um, well, I think any sort of semi-traumatic experience is going to change the way that you approach things. And as someone, it was it's not just my job, but it's also usually a stress relief for me. And so I had absolutely no outlet during a time when I was extremely stressed. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's and so, so yeah, true. It, it, uh, it definitely changed me a little bit. And, and I want to be honest, you know, I definitely don't want to get too far on the dark side of things, but I feel like um, some of my personal struggles with moving forward in music has been a perception that I'm not doing things correctly or that anything bad that happens or what seems like a lack of progress to me is actually really normal. And so when people are hiding things in the limelight about how great life is and how awesome every experience is, like I just find, I have a hard time with that. And uh, I want to be honest with people about what's happening. And, um, you know, I've been criticized for that sort of thing, but I think I will continue on that path. So. You know, the thing is, you, you can't allow other people's criticisms to control how you live your life. Sure. And, and you know what works best for you. Right. I, I'm sure you've tried many times to, to do things the way someone else has told you would be a more uh, correct or maybe perhaps a more profitable way. Sure. But if you're not comfortable with it, it's, it's going to come through in the art. Right. And, and at the bottom of the day, uh, all the great songwriters say the same thing. Whatever you do, it's got to be in service to the song. <laughs> Nothing yeah. else. So, so don't let anybody else try to change how you go about things, how you do things. Uh, I mean, the fact that at, at your age and as long as you've been doing this, this is your second headlining gig at the Triple Door. Mm -hmm. uh, let the haters hate. You've got to be doing something right. Cause that's that's not an easy gig to get. <laughs> it's a beautiful venue. It's my favorite. I love it. That's uh, fantastic. And once again, uh, the show is coming up Wednesday, April 22nd. Uh, it will be at the Triple Door in Seattle with uh, with Ellen Reed on the bill as well. And uh, how about we do another song and then we'll come back and talk about happier things. Sure thing. <laughs>
Once again, Kate Lynn Logan, live in the Sunlit Room. Thank you very much for that, Kate. Another uh, absolutely beautiful song. Thank you. Now, uh, again, getting to, uh, to happier subjects. Sure. <laughs> the, uh, one of the ways that uh, a musician is able to, uh, to make money and, uh, and to get their music out there is through uh, publishing deals. Sure. And, uh, and I know that you uh, have deals with, uh, with Lyric House Publishing and ABC Family. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, uh, how does something like that come about? Do you like, uh, have to send music to them? Is it like an audition pro process? Or does somebody hear your music and approach you? How does that come together? Uh, well, for me, it sort of fell in my lap when I had an indie label approach me about signing. And I ultimately turned the offer down, but they were connected to Lyric House. Um, who still wanted to sign me to their deal regardless of the, the indie label. And then through, through them, um, ABC Family heard my music, and so then I also signed with them. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to be going to like, some seminars and stuff about how to get placements, because um, it can often take a long time and sometimes right. never, because, I mean, the rosters are huge, and they got a lot of music to choose from, so it's it's a big waiting game. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how to better get my foot in the door that way. So well, that's fantastic. Well, I mean, the fact that you're uh, you're signed is step one. Oh, totally, <laughs> so, absolutely. So you got that that part out yes, of the way. Yes, it's a huge now step. It's, uh, now it's just a, a matter of learning how to work the system properly, yes, I guess, to, sure. to make sure they listen. And, uh, and, and definitely they should, because uh, I know there's, there's a lot of shows out there that uh, your music would be perfect for, because you do have a very atmospheric and, uh, and at times, very mellow sound that would go in good, especially on uh, some of those programs that are on ABC Family, because sometimes sure, they yeah. deal with issues that, mm -hmm. that the young women and young people especially need to deal with. Sure. And, uh, and boy, your music definitely deals with a lot of those <laughs> subjects. <laughs> now... Uh, once, uh, now that you have the, uh, the publishing deals, as you said, it's something that uh, you want to explore and, and get better mm -hmm. at, uh, at using. Uh, does that ever enter your mind while you're writing a song? Uh, like, if I did this a little differently or that a little differently, would it be more appealing to a, to a TV show? Does that ever enter your process? It does, yeah. There's, there's been specific times where I sit down to write, um, or commissioned, I mean being commissioned to write a song. Um, I'll get lists of sounds like this song sounds like this artist that we're looking for and then write with those parameters in mind um i think there's different it, it's a good exercise i mean sometimes it's much easier to write when you're removed like from whatever subject matter that you know or whatever sound they want you to have um it's it can be a lot harder to be in the midst of your own emotional turmoil and trying to write a song about it so it's a good exercise when uh, when you are commissioned for stuff like that do uh, do they give you an idea of of like the placement of the song what kind of show it would be and what the scene would be or they just give you like parameters of a certain sound or tempo they're looking for for a scene they do sometimes list the actual show and then um you know a band or a song that they like a certain sound um so they'll give sometimes even give a clip the song. Have, uh, have you ever gotten one of those and uh, and just uh, looked at it and went, ah, I hate this band. I can't do this. <laughs> I I've definitely just been like, um, yeah, there's no there's no way that I can sound like that. Like I'm not gonna be able to write a song like that. I, I'm, you know, I'm not pink. <laughs> Who is though? Really, I mean, uh, talk about a one of a type, one of a kind person. Oh, totally. Like, she has a fantastic voice too. I, you know, the thing that always amazes me about her, if you've ever seen her perform live, when she, when she gets up and starts doing all the stuff on the trapeze mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, oh, and crazy. still doesn't miss a note. It's crazy. It's yes. crazy how she can do that. She has to be in like Super the best strength. state, the, yeah. the best shape of, of any woman on the planet to pull that off. <laughs> now, um, in your uh, in your own career, you've got uh, uh, four recordings that are that are out there available for purchase, right? Uh -huh. Uh, and you've uh, you've started uh, doing branching out a little bit now. Uh, Caitlin Logan and the uh, the Ghost Runners is that a, a separate entity from uh, from your solo work, or are the Ghost Runners just a band you usually 
uh, work with? Um, I'm not actually playing with the Ghost Runners this time. They are mm -hmm. a specific band of guys, and they are their own entity. Right, so, that's, what, um, that's what I thought. Yeah, so sometimes I combine forces, and other times I play with other people. Um, yeah, so, do yeah, this time around, be more folk. Do you uh, do you ever, because I know you also have another project, just a, a duo mm -hmm. uh, with the Back Bar Angel. Yes. Uh, do you approach those projects uh, differently than you do your own solo work? And at times, have there been songs that you're like, I like this, but it's not really me. Maybe I'll take it to one or the other and see what we can do with it. Um, I don't actually approach it any differently than solo work. It's oh, just cool. that it um, takes a different shape because it's a different person with a different ear, which is really cool and shows you like how you can turn a song into anything really that you want to with the right production. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, Back Where Angel stuff is much more pop-oriented and much more placement-oriented, too. Um, and uh, I've been working on some stuff with Kevin Beach, too, who's, like, oh. way more folk Americana. Like, he did Sarah Garrettson's EP, Origin. Right. Right. Great, great record, by the way. Beautiful. And, and thank you for bringing that up, because it allows sure. me to bring in a plug. Uh, Miss Garrettson is going to be our guest right here in the Sunlit Room next Thursday. So Kate didn't even know she was doing that. But she set me up perfectly <laughs> I got, for that. <laughs> I got my I got my tickets already, so I'm excited to see her. Fantastic, man. Yeah, I can't uh, I can't wait. She uh, she was nice enough to uh, send me some of the tracks from her uh, her so newest good, record. Yeah. Wow. And uh, by the way, folks, coming up at two o'clock on the New Music Showcase, I'll be spotlighting one of those new songs from uh, Sarah Garrettson. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But now to put the spotlight back where it should be <laughs> on Caitlin Logan. Uh, we were talking a little bit before uh, before we came on the air, and uh, and you were telling me about a, a new project that you have coming up. You're going to be uh, uh, releasing or recording a, a new video come May. Yes, I'm working on a single um, with Kevin Beach uh, at Seahurst Cabin, and uh, we will be live recording um, the actual recording of it um, in May, and I'm not sure exactly when it will be released yet, but... Um, so it's it's a really cool multi-dimensional project that's happening right now. Now, do you uh, do you enjoy making videos, or is that so like a necessary um, evil type thing? <laughs> I enjoy watching other people work on it. Um, it's you know the, the camera and the, the whole. I mean, anything social is a little bit hard for me, and so the camera's hard for me sometimes. Um, it's hard to act <laughs> normally. I think that happens to a lot of people. You know, you don't know where to hold your hands or whatever. And so. <laughs> Just, just you know, the best advice I can give you is uh, is just forget the cameras. Yeah. Just, just be yourself. You know, that's what I always tell folks when they uh, when they first come in for an interview. If they've never done anything like this before, if it's new to them, uh, I always tell them just just forget the audience. Yep. You're just having a conversation with me, mm -hmm. and and there just happens to be you know a couple thousand people listening. <laughs> but don't worry about it. <laughs> no, you know, ninety five percent of the time, if something goes wrong, we have a very sophisticated audience here at KSER. They are really, you know, when it comes to music, they know what they're talking about. So 95% of the time, if something goes wrong, they know it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> they, they understand that. They've listened to the show long enough to understand. It was me. So uh, so you never have to worry about it. And you should approach videos and those types of things with that same mindset. Just be yourself. You're a very likable person, Kate. Uh, before I let you get out of here, I would, uh, I would love it if you could give us one more song. Sure. Cool. I'm going to play uh, an older one, just so I don't reveal too many secrets about uh, what's going to happen at the show. <laughs> play a bunch of new ones at the show. So you got to come out to hear this.
are the river and the rain. Kate Lynn Logan, a song you've heard many times here in the Sunlit Room. But uh, nothing beats hearing it played live <laughs> by Kate herself. Kate, again, it's always such a pleasure to uh, get a chance to catch up with you. And uh, thank you so very much for making the time to come and hang out with us oh, today. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, it's Caitlin Logan. The show is Wednesday, April 22nd at the Triple Door with uh, Ellen Reed as the uh, support act. The show starts at 7.30. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to uh, to say to the uh, listeners before we have to say goodbye? Uh, just thank you. Thank you for listening, for hanging out. Hope to see you at the show. Oh, I almost forgot. One more thing I did want to, uh, to uh, mention. Uh, like this project with your uh, video that's shooting in May. If uh, folks want to keep up to date on that and where they can find it, uh, what are the best places to go? Should they just contact you uh, via Facebook or on your website? Where's, where's the best place to keep up to date on what's going on in Caitlin Logan's world? I will definitely post the video on my website, which is CaitlinLogan.com. Perfect. Uh, which is two names, the Caitlin. K-A-T-E-L-Y-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Exactly, <laughs> yes. That's, I guess that's a very important it distinction is. to make. People will be swearing at their computers. What is she talking about? <laughs> There's no website out there. Uh, perfect. So there you go. CaitlinLogan.com. Uh, keep up to date on everything this uh, fabulous young lady's doing. Uh, she'll be sure and post any new music that's out or uh, any future shows that she has in the area right there so you'll always know and you never have to miss a show. Again, thank you very much, Kate. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your day.